Hey, I'm Rob. Back when I was in school, they taught us the five W's when you want to present information. Who, what, when, where, why, and how, which is six, but how is not a W, so it's five. We're going to call it the five W's still. Let's check off that list. Who? I already said, hey, this is Rob. That one's covered. Where? I'm in Casa Grande, Arizona. Yes, it's Casa Grande. To look at it, the spelling, you would want to say Casa Grande to go the Spanish punctuation, but locals say Casa Grande. If you're from Arizona, you say Casa Grande. If you want to act like you know what you're talking about, you say Casa Grande. When? It is April 2024, if you're looking at this in the future. The why, how, and what. Let's do what next. I have a router lift table, my shop table I just built, and I have a router lift on here. So when I want to lift the router, I, I lift it that way, or I can use my socket driver to go up and down, whatever I want. And I have a cover on this. It's a threaded cap, a threaded cover. It spins out real easy. Why did I do this? <laughs> because it's cool, duh. You could probably do something just as functional that's not quite as elaborate, though this isn't, wasn't that hard of a project. It came out pretty easy. So if you want to emulate this or use it for some other project, copy my settings. I'll show those in a little bit on the VCarve Pro. We'll go from there. I just showed you how it all works, basically. I'm going to lower this back down again because I will cut myself on that if I'm not careful. And speaking of cutting yourself, when I first built this, I didn't have these little caps in here to reach in there, and I was spinning it this way, and you know what? That's a pretty sharp edge. I got little paper cut type thing, which still bothering me. It kind of hacked me off that I did that to myself. So I have these caps, finger holes, just put it on there. So no more paper cuts. Okay. And how? The last one. Let's go inside and I'll show you on VCar Pro how I set this up, designed it. You can copy that if you want. And then we'll watch it on the CNC machine cut out. And that'll pretty much be it. Now we are inside and looking at VCarve Pro. It's the software I use for this. This is the male insert, the cap that's going to screw in and out. First, let me show you the settings I have for the threading bit I use. So it's a Magnate 796. It's available on Amazon. It's not too expensive. Notice the settings on here. I spent quite a bit of time getting it figured out, getting it set up. I think these are correct. I might be off a smidge somewhere, but all I know is results work in the end. So I'm keeping these settings. So if you want to save yourself some time and order this bit, you can copy these settings. It should work for you. So let's cancel out of that. And again, this is the mail part. So first I have a little uh, this would be a, a drilling tool path. So I'm only going an eighth of an inch deep. I want to mark that dead center. I'll explain that a little more in detail why I'm doing that. Then I'll cut out the finger holes and the outside. So we'll cut it out. In fact, I'll show you what we get when we do that. Let's preview that. Let's do all these, both those. You have the tabs there. At this point, I will actually remove this from the CNC or I'll cut the tabs out. And I'm going to remount that again later because the issue with the threading tool path, the threading bit, notice how right here, the edge that cuts, it actually goes lower than that. So I have to raise the piece up for it to get the bottom edge or else it'll cut way into the spoil board or it won't get the bottom edge. So it's important you actually lift the piece up before you cut that. You'll see that again in the video, but that's why I'm removing this from the CNC at this point. So I've marked that center point. So when I reattach this, I'll use that as my center point on the CNC again so I know it's centered. And then the final step will be the threading for the mail piece. You can watch this. I'm going to show that again and I'm going to slow this down so you can watch it a little slower and we're going to preview that tool path. You'll notice it's cutting in. It keeps going down, keeps going down. 
in that threading toolpath. The 3D view that they give us, the emulation, it does not do an undercut, show the undercut. So it doesn't look like there's threads here on this, but there are, trust me. That's just how the software, there's one of the limitations on that. That'd be a, a lot of extra work, I think, to do that. And for the threading toolpath, let's take a look at this. I'm actually going, even though this is a three quarter inch material, I'm going an inch and an eighth down. Just again, because the tool, the threading tool, it has to cut below the surface, or at least to the very bottom of the surface, below that setting. So a three-quarter inch setting here for a three-quarter inch thick piece of wood would not go all the way through. You have to go extra. So that's why that's more. We already talked about that tool. The pitch is a quarter inch. So because it's three-quarter inch, it takes three, three full turns for us to get from out to flush with the surface. So that's what I wanted. I could have changed that more or less. I started with a lot less than that. So it took eight turns, I think, to get it in on my testing. Did not like that at all. The hole is four and a half inches, which actually, this hole is, well, what size is that hole? It doesn't really matter. I went a little bigger, actually, for that hole. This setting does not care how big that line actually is. I could have this be a tiny little circle or a giant circle, four and a half salt matters. It's going to use the center point of the circle, but that's all it really cares about. And the fit tolerance, that's giving us nine thou. So in theory, if that's on both sides, it would give us a nine thou tolerance, which is pretty tight, at least for my settings. So when I went to the female, I raised that up a little bit. This is the external threading for the male side. It's a right-handed thread, which that's, I assume, what you want. You can whatever you want. So that's all there is to those settings. Now let's look at the female settings. Same basic thing. This hole is going to be a little bit smaller, I believe. And I wanted to have a little more overlap. So when it cuts that thread, if it's the exact same size, the threading won't, it, this will be cut into the threading. You won't have the threading. So this hole has to be a little smaller on this one. So let's go to the female pocket. That's where I just cut this out. We'll go to three view. Let's close that and reset. And we preview. Oops. Again, there are tabs here. Uh, before I actually do the threading, I will knock out those tabs and leave this the hole open. Again, I'm raising this up a little bit. A uh, quarter inch, I believe, I raised it up on that. It's quarter inch plywood. So there is a gap below the bottom of the surface and the CNC bit. I had to raise that up. And the female thread, we'll watch that one run. Review that toolpath. And notice how it's coming in that a little bit. Again, it was trial and error to get the right size original hole for this and then the threading. I love how you can preview these tool paths, preview what it's going to look like before you actually cut it, because otherwise I would have wasted a lot of wood testing. So I do like that feature a lot in VCarve. And let's look at the full settings on that. To create this tool path, all I did was I had the mail thread, I just duplicated it, came over this one, and I switched. Oops, that's not the right one. And all I did is switch from external to internal. That's the only difference. And then after I did a test with some test pieces, I wasn't happy with tolerance, so I bumped it up, what, 6,000. So now it's 15,000, it's 9,000 to start with, I think. So I bumped that up just a little bit, got a fit that's tight, but not so tight you can't screw it in. Now it's important, you want to do the male part first, and then you want to cut this one, the female, you do a test fit. Don't take it off the CNC machine yet. Do a test fit. It was too tight. Come in here, bump this up. Create another tool path. Do it again while it's still on the CNC machine. Once you take it off, you can't change those threads. But if it's still on the machine, you can keep bumping this up. You can do it four or five times, getting bigger and bigger until you're happy with the fit. So important. Do the male part first, then do the female, test fit, recalculate, do a little more each time if you want until you get it right. That's all we need to see in VCarve Pro, I think. 
And now we're out of the CNC machine, obviously. First step is to drill the marker hole so we can have zero later when we're going to put the threading on. We've raised it up. And then I'll drill the little holes, the finger holes, to twist it and cut out the plug or the nail part. And here you'll notice I've got some filled in strips of craft plywood. I'm going to use two of those to get consistent height to raise up the mail plug. I put some bolts in the T-track and ran them up through the finger holes. And I'll put a washer and a nut through that and clamp it down. That should hold it nice and firm in place. Next, I'll find the X and Y zero from that marker hole I originally drilled. I'll line that up perfectly. And once I can spin that bit freely, I know I've got it just right. Here I'm changing out the end mill with the threading bit. It should be a simple task, but I have the camera where I normally stand and suddenly it becomes quite awkward. Now I'm using the touch plate to set the Z height for the threading tool bit. As I mentioned before, the height settings, the how deep I've cut, it's a little confusing using the threading tool bit. So I'm manually looking right here. You can't see my head in the shot. But I'm manually looking making sure the height's right, then I go to the full depth, making sure it's not cutting too deep. I want to do that before I actually started cutting because it's easy to mess things up, especially when you don't understand these tool paths first time using them. And now I'll run the tool path for the threading bit. A side note here, you'll notice the first pass, the first circle around, it's putting a chamfer on the top and then it actually starts doing the threading. And now a quick inspection just to make sure everything looks right. And so far, so good. Now we're on to the base of the router table. The first step will be cut out the female or internal part of the toolpath for the threading. I'll run an inside profile toolpath to cut this out. After putting in the threading bit and setting the Z height, it's time to run the threading toolpath. As I mentioned before, I'm using a previous version of the Z-Lift mechanism for my CNC machine. And here are a few close-up shots of the whole lift mechanism with the threaded cover. I think I'm going to be quite happy with this. So far, it looks very promising to me. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. Have a great day, everyone.